Hi everyone, welcome to Python Tutorials where we are putting special focus on image processing related tasks. We are in the middle of discussing various deep learning related terminology. In the last video, we looked at backpropagation and optimizers and prior to that, we looked at loss functions, activation and scaling. In this video, let's talk about batch size, iterations and epochs. And this can be a bit confusing if you haven't uh, if you haven't uh, spent enough time trying to understand what exactly these are, okay? So let's quickly establish what these are and then jump onto our Python code to do a couple of experiments by changing the batch size, for example, and checking out how the output looks like uh, as we change the batch size. Okay, so first of all, where do you encounter this? After you define your model, you compile your model. As part of your comp compilation of the model, you provide your optimizer, right? I mean, you provide your loss functions and uh, what metrics to follow. And then comes the time to fit the model. So when you fit it, you tell what your X values are and Y values are. And you tell what the batch size is. And verbose is, would you like to print something on the screen while training is happening? Epochs, we'll talk about that again today validation split and shuffle equals to false. This is a typical line of code for model.fit. Now let's look at batch size and epochs. Now, the batch size, obviously the name suggests that it is the size of a batch of data. And it defines the number of samples that propagate through the network before updating the model parameters. Okay, now what does that mean? In the last video, we saw that when you do back propagation, right? So there's a forward propagation and back propagation. What happens during the forward propagation? It calculates the values at every node, right? It's just basic math. And once you do that, you can estimate or you can calculate, I should say, your output. Now you take your output compare it with the expected output, which is the ground truth and calculate what the loss is right? So why am I talking about all of that? Well, batch size is nothing but the amount of data that goes through this entire journey of forward propagation and backward propagation, okay? Each batch of samples go through one full forward and one full backward propagation. If you have uh, 1,000 points of data and if your batch size is 100, all 100 goes through and comes back. That's when, uh, that's what you call a batch size. Now, why do you have a batch size to begin with? Well, before jumping there, let's look at this example. I just mentioned 1,000, let's use 3,000 as an example. You have 3,000 images and your batch size is 32 and your total number of epochs is 500. We just, you know, uh, we'll go through this again uh, when we get to the actual experiment part in Python. So what this means is 32 samples will be taken each time through the network forward and backward. How long does it take to get to 3000 images. If you're loading 32 at a time, how long does it take to go all 3000? 3000 divided by 32, which means about 94 iterations, okay? So with 3000 images, batch size of 32, it takes 94 times to go through the entire data of 3000, okay? And one epoch is basically when all the 3000 data points go through the forward and backward propagation. And how many times are you going to do this? 500 times because your epochs is 500. That means the network is seeing the entire data 500 times. Let me repeat this. 32 is a small batch of your or a subset of your all images that goes through forward and backward. But to see all of your 3000 images, it has to load 32 at a time go forward, go backward, load the next 32, forward, backward, and so on, how many times? 94 times, and these are the number of iterations. Once you do a 94 iterations, that means you're done with one epoch. The network saw every bit of your data that you have, and 500 epochs is 500 times. You do this, and while all of this is happening, after every batch, your weights are updated. And hopefully after 500 epochs, or even before that, it should find the minimum. That's it. It's very simple to understand this. Now the question is, do you need small or large batch sizes? Now let's look at this from an intuitive point of view. First of all, 
you probably do not even have a choice because if you're dealing with images or large images especially you're probably limited by how much uh, your ram or gpu can handle you probably encountered this you try to load a lot of images and then it's like okay out of memory error because it cannot fit it so you're probably limited by that and also smaller batches mean each step in the gradient descent is less accurate we saw this in the last video when i talked about stochastic gradient descent because you're loading data in a small batch or like individual it's the ride is bumpy in finding the minimum okay so that's very similar here smaller batches mean each step in this gradient descent may be less accurate you're probably going up you're probably coming down up and down up and down but it takes longer for the algorithm converge but it sure converges now if you use larger batches again based on others work there is a significant degradation in the quality of model uh, meaning the model gets a bit more uh, uh, it's less generalized okay or overfitting will be a problem so if you fit the entire data and you if uh, and, and you're updating the weights it works great for the training data but it may not work great for other data so it has been proven that by actually using smaller batches the model can be a bit more generalized okay and where to start a batch size of 32 or 64 is a good starting point in general okay and uh, again it completely depends on the problem but typically this is this rule of thumb works fine uh, so before jumping onto the code the biggest summary here is large batch sizes result in faster progress obviously you have the entire batch done quickly instead of loading individual but they don't always converge fast okay so you have faster progress, but they don't converge fast. On the other hand, smaller batches, they train slower, but then they can converge fast. It may sound a bit counterintuitive, which means in real life time, when you're loading different batches, it trains a bit slow, but then it converges fast, even though it trains slow, okay? When it comes to large batches, it's fast training, but then it takes forever to converge, okay? So that's, uh, that's, the batch size iterations and epochs now let's jump on to uh, the same code that we have used in the last video to to do a couple of experiments with batch sizes okay so here is let's go ahead and connect the collab uh, runtime and uh, let's make sure we are using uh, there we are not using anything here but uh, that's okay let's leave that i mean we are not using gpu the training will be a bit slow but uh, if it is too slow we'll change that in a minute but this is the same example as last time so we are importing uh, pandas and we are working with this wisconsin breast cancer data set so let's go ahead and import the csv file and uh, we don't need those steps let's rename the diagnosis to label and if you if you haven't watched my previous video this is the data we are dealing with so you have malignant and benign and uh, labeled as m and b which means we need to change those to zero and one so we'll encode that uh, right here. So that's the next step. And the step after is we need to define our X values, which is every column except for label and ID, okay? And now we need to scale X values because they range from 40 to 800 to 0 0.007. So it's all over the place. So let's bring all the attributes to the same level. So let's go ahead and normalize this. Now, let's uh, split this into training and testing data so we can use some of the data for validation during training process. I'll make a video on what's the difference between validation, training, and testing. Uh, it may sound very simple, but uh, maybe it's not. <laughs> and uh, for optimizers, let's use the stochastic gradient descent optimizer right there. And now let's go ahead and fit the model, right? Before fitting, so here is the fit, model.fit what batch size i parameterized batch size and i actually say right now let's use a batch size of eight okay and let's work with 100 epochs first of all did we look at how many um, training samples okay i think i'm printing that out down here so let's run this to see exactly what happens so the shape of my training data is 426 by 30. what does that mean i have 426 data points and 30 columns right 30 features and if you divide 426 by 8 you get about 54. that means that many iterations that's why i think i turned the gpu off so we can see this uh, happening okay so our batch size is eight we have 426 total data points which means 
the to see the all 426 data points it takes 54 iterations okay so let's see how that looks like now let's go ahead and fit and as soon as we do that you should see you see 54 out of 54 right there so epoch number 30 epoch number whatever and then it's doing 54 out of 54 it's too fast to see that if you have lots of data you'll see one out of 54 two out of 54 three out of 54 and so on it's so fast that it's doing it uh, you know it's uh, even with gpu turned off it's doing this in a pretty fast way so epoch 100 out of 100 it saw all 54 out of 54 and if you look at the if you look at the curve down here, just to get a quick idea of how the training is going on, that's not bad. Starts The loss starts off high and then tries to saturate down here, okay? Now let's change the batch size and see if there is any effect right here, okay? So let's change the batch size to, uh, let's do just one. Let's change it to 64 and restart and run all. Let's restart this. So it starts from scratch. And so now what happens when you do that, when you change your batch size to 64? Now you have only seven iterations, right? 426 divided by 64, it's about seven. So only seven iterations. So if you go down, you see seven out of seven. I just wanna show you the math going on here. So when you look at this screen printout, okay? Out of 100, this is your epoch, right? I mean, it clearly says this is epoch. And then this is iterations, seven out of seven. Now let's go down and look at the curve. Absolutely horrible, meaning we have larger batch sizes. The training is super fast. We, if you time it, how long did it take to get to 100 epochs? With 64 batch size, it would be much faster than eight batch size, real clock time. How long does it take to get to 100 epochs? But then the problem is in 100 epochs, you're not finding the minimum. You probably need 300 or something. So let's change this to, uh, let's do one exercise. Now that we understand this, let's go ahead and change the runtime to GPU. So it works a bit faster. Okay, it will re, re, restart the runtime. Now let's go ahead and uh, run this for 300 epochs. And let's run everything, run. We just restarted the runtime, so it's okay. Let's run all and see at what point does it actually converge and then see how does it compare against uh, against uh, a batch size of eight. So I hope things make sense here. Smaller batch sizes, too small, not good. Too large, not good. Find that fine balance. So uh, this is uh, going pretty fast. Obviously this is GPU and uh, once this is done it should be plotting oh even now it's not converged you see even at 300 it's still converging maybe 500 to 1000 it'll eventually get there now just out of curiosity i'm not sure if you are still uh, watching i hope you are uh, because this can be very educational let's actually go to a batch size of 16 and let's end there, okay, once this is done. Restart and run all. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, batch size of 16 for images is okay. 32 is probably ideal and 64, even for this type of data, 32 is probably ideal. Um, uh, or 16 or 32 uh, is okay. 64, we just saw that it's not even converging even after 300 uh, epochs. So you have to train this for a real long uh, long time. So the key here is at what point are you balancing the speed versus, uh, uh, you know, in terms of how fast it's uh, converging. Okay, so after this, uh, hopefully this should be converging because this is just 16, there you go, right? So this is not bad. So after 200 or 250 epochs, it was pretty good. Remember with eight batch size, it was done even at 100 epochs. Okay, so I hope uh, this makes sense. I hope now you know the difference between batches, iterations, and epochs, and more importantly, the implications of batch size on your training. In the next video, again, let's continue understanding the various terminology. So let's meet again. Please do subscribe to this channel.